Good morning, Las Vegas. Welcome to Vegas Real Cheap Check, your Vegas real estate news show. I am your host, Tiana Carroll, and my partner in crime, Trish Williams, is off today. But thank you so much for tuning in and joining us. We have a great show for everybody who is ready to jump into the market once those rate drops. You need to be prepared to do that. And in order to do that, you're going to have to start getting your credit in line. And so we have a returning guest, uh, Cindy Hollis. She is with uh, CMG Financial, and she's been here before. We've talked about buying um, like second homes, but now, like I said, interest rates are, you know, slated to drop next year. And when that happens, everybody's going to jump into the market. And those who are serious about it, they need to be prepared. So we're going to talk everything credit. Yes, thank How you so prepare? much oh, for having me. Thanks for being here. It's good to have you back. Thank you. How have you been? Uh, great. I mean, the holiday season is definitely definitely upon us. So, yeah. I mean, we're seeing that trickle effect. Yeah, um, and that actually showed up in our numbers this week. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yes. so every week at the beginning, you've been here, you know. Sure. Every week at the beginning of the show, we talk about our numbers, our active uh, listings in Vegas, what's sold and what have you. So today, our active sales are 4,180. 18 active homes on the market. Now, in perspective, last week was 4,177. So we have a little bit less now than we did last week. Holidays are definitely on. Yeah, (laughs) but you know where I really saw it was in the solds because the the homes that sold uh, last week were 377 homes that were sold. And that's a pretty normal number, right? right? But we had a huge dip this week and we just did 137 sold homes. Wow, that is a dip. That is a dip. Wow. So that is definitely an indicator that people are on pause for this holiday season. Yeah. So there you go. And uh, price decreases have also uh, fallen. We had 418 price decreases last week, and this week we have uh, 351. So yeah, that is a big yeah decrease so, again. Well, it also is a good indicator that everybody's sort of sitting happy right where they're at. Right, we're not losing value. No, no. no. I mean, and that's the. I mean, that's the fear right now, if you will. Yeah. That people are like, oh my gosh, we're going to lose value or we shouldn't be doing anything. But really, our market's holding very strong. Yeah, our market's doing really, really good. There's a lot of other markets that went way, way up like we did and have come down more than we have. Yeah. And But I think that there's so much going on in our valley and development happening. Like, um, did you hear there? slated a new airport for Las Vegas. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Not only will we have the Harry Reid International Airport located right here by the Strip, but they're doing a, um, I believe it's going to be a commuter airport out by Prim. Wow. Yeah. That should bring a lot more activity. And I mean, you already have everybody from all over the world that yeah. come here. Yeah. It's Vegas, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we just <laughs> literally had the biggest global event we've ever had when oh we had F1 gosh. here. Oh, wow. That was crazy. Were you in town for that? I know no. you go back so and forth. So can you explain what F1 is? Oh, my okay, gosh. Okay, so F1 is the Formula One racing, the Grand oh, Prix. Oh, cool. It's a European motor racing, so it's not like NASCAR or stock car or right. anything. Um, it's very high speed. I mean, it was a it was crazy. Of adrenaline, I'm a sure. lot of adrenaline. Those cars are so fast. Um, it, like I was coming over the bridge when the cars were passing by, and I could hear them, could hear them, could hear them. And I thought I'd catch like a glimpse, and all of a sudden it was like a streak of lightning. Zoom! And I was like, okay. "That's pretty sexy." <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Those cars are sleek and powerful, but that's a huge global event. It's so much bigger in other parts of the world than it is in the United States, but we are now on the circuit for 10 years. And I think overall it was a, I mean, of course, the locals didn't like it, right? They're ripping right. up the roads, well, commute I mean, to work, whatever. Needs more but, reasons for people to come visit, right? Right. <laughs> but I think overall the event went pretty well, especially for the this first one. This is the first one. Yeah, right? this is the oh, first one. Wow. And this is also the first time that F1 itself has mm-hmm. been a promoter. Usually they'll go to the city, and the city is the one who promotes and puts it together. But F1 did it themselves. And so cheers to you guys. Overall, it was a really good showing. And kind of behind the scenes, what I'm seeing as an opportunity is the build of the economy. Yeah. Because of events like this, this is a worldwide event in a worldwide transient city. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I mean, everybody from the world wants to come here. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, it's crazy. Um, I grew up in this town. Um, I've and been you here. still live here. I st Well, I love it here, <laughs> right? It's hard for me, like, when I go on vacation or something and they roll up the streets, like, at 9 or 10 o'clock at night. I'm used to being able to pop into a Walgreens at 1 a.m. and get what I need or, you know, whatever, right? Hours, I, yeah. Or my kids were notorious when they were little, like, telling me the night before that they need a poster board, like, at 9 o'clock at night. I'm like, what? You're supposed to be in bed. And then I'm rushing off to a, a Target to grab a poster board at 10 30 at night but they're open so yay vegas <laughs> yeah oh my gosh that's yeah. crazy i'm and, long gone in bed by then <laughs> yeah yeah that, well that's sort of the extreme of people right, right. So, sure. especially when you get to my age yeek. Uh, <laughs> most of them are like um we're done we're in bed by 7 30 and i'm like oh i haven't even had dinner at that point yet <laughs> But that's what happens when you grow up here in Vegas. Yeah, yeah, I do. I love Vegas, and I'm still here. And anybody wants to come out here and get a house, we're going to teach you all about building your credit so that way you can get the house. Because that's what you're hearing, right? Mm -hmm. When the oh, market yeah. changes, we're going to buy. Um, yeah, and you know, really, it's a plan. Mm -hmm. It's a process. It's not something you're going to just qualify for. Right. So you really do want to put some time, invest, and effort into it so that when you are ready to buy mm -hmm. you're actually qualified yeah to buy yeah so get those a, ducks in a row yes and sometimes we've got the ducks but they are not in a row yeah <laughs> you're like it's like herding kittens at this point like oh no like, come here let's get these in a row yes how did this goose get in here and where's the swan from <laughs> she's got a whole menagerie of animals trying at to least, get in a row yes so it can be really hectic and complicated and a little bit overwhelming if you don't have the right guidance yeah and there's a lot of bad credit management companies really out there taking advantage of people who right don't there was no a large national one mm -hmm. that what? recently was it the beginning of this year february march ish march. yeah, yeah. March and uh they ended up filing bankruptcy right mm -hmm. they yeah. did and you know it just goes to show and how that name recognition is not always the most reliable. Right. So you do you want to research and make sure that you get to a good, reliable, trustworthy resource that can actually help you. Yeah, and those are hard to find, or. Oh. <laughs> Yes. Well, I've, I've only saying that because um, I have a lot of first-time home buyers. Mm -hmm. I love helping people sort of realize the dream of home ownership because that's really the foundation for the rest of your financial future, in my opinion. Yeah, but, lifetime. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, I always like to help them out, but there's so many that come to me with the purest intentions, and they're like, we've hired a credit repair company, uh -huh. and we pay them $100 a month for the past six months, and my score has gone up 17 points, and I'm like there's got to be a better way. Yes. Yeah. But before we get into actually how to raise that credit score, let's talk about credit itself. Um, basically, the, the variables that go into determining a credit score. So there's lots of variables. And quite honestly, um, they don't teach us in school at all. And I we're still like, trying to figure out why why they don't teach these valuable life lessons and one of the things i, have I to say agree. i feel like there's a deficit when you come out of school for a lot of us that didn't know because i didn't know about credit when like, i got I out of school i don't care about algebra anymore <laughs> <laughs> I've never used algebra, by the way, and I'm a numbers-minded person. Yes, you do love okay. numbers. Or trigonometry, or calculus. I don't use it, and I'm a numbers person. I use numbers every single day. But what I do care is how to increase my credit score. So the rule is when you have good credit, you can borrow money for cheap or even get paid to borrow money. Oh. But when you have poor credit, you're going to pay a lot of money when it comes to borrowing money. Yeah. So you're really penalized. Yeah, it's sort of an unfair scale, but for people lending money, they want to basically know that you're going to get that money back to them sure. in a timely manner. So there's risk levels, right? Right. So lots of factors. Uh, credit score is a huge factor when qualifying for a mortgage or any type of loan, really. And the higher your credit score, the less risk you appear to be to the lender or to whoever is trying to give you money. So how is that credit score determined? Like There are several factors. One, okay. of course, is credit history. That's the biggest factor. Okay. Do you actually pay your bills on time? Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is, sounds so simple and elementary, but that's the biggest piece of the pie. 
Right. If you don't pay your bills on time, you're going to be penalized. All right. So mental note, everything gets paid on time. I know. There's this thing called due date. That's pretty important. <laughs> yeah. Pay by this time. Yes. Yeah. And, and then, then the next section that's really surprising, actually, is your credit utilization, basically okay. on revolving credit. Okay. So how so, much of your credit you're actually using? Yes, and of revolving credit only, this section I'm going to focus on is like if you max out your credit cards. So revolving credit, as um, as a reminder, is like a credit card where right. you only pay on the balance that you owe. And then once you pay it down, you can borrow against it. Again, you have a credit limit. So the more you max out your credit limit, the higher or I'm sorry, the more you're gonna drop your credit score. Okay, so if I had a credit card that had a $1,000 credit limit mm -hmm. and I put $900 on that buying all sorts of fun stuff for my for new place. Christmas. Yeah, or Christmas, or holidays, <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm spending all of this money and I get to $900 on my $1,000 credit card. That's maxed out. That's pretty close to maxed out. Okay. Right, so. So my credit would take a ding for using my own credit. Right. Okay. So we already talked about due date. Okay. And you, I'm shocked because so many people don't know about this, oh, okay. but there's, there's two dates that we really want to know. Two Due dates, very right. important. Wait, For, do I get to ask the question that yes, I had? Oh my gosh. Okay. So what is the due date payment versus the statement date? See? Oh okay. my gosh. So you're <laughs> ahead of the game. Like seriously? Well, ahead. I kind of have a little bit of experience. I'm not a pro at this, but it be, does fall in line with me being able to do my job is and to helping people. Facilitate right. It. The right, so I have life. a very rudimentary idea of all this, but no, you are the pro, so no. tell me, girl. That, I'm telling you, is like 50% of the battle. So, yes, we've got the due date, and then we have what we call the statement date. Okay. The statement date is the date that credit card company reports your current balance to the credit bureaus. Okay. So if your due date is the 15th of every month, right. but the statement date is the 10th of every month, you can see that you might be maxed out right before your due date okay. or the cycle date okay. or statement date. So Sorry. wouldn't it then make sense to make the payment on this or before the statement date so you had less that's being yes, reported? Yes, it would. Okay. Or what you do have control, a lot of people don't know, is you can change your due date. Oh, so we can change our due date if the statement date's the 10th. We can change our due date to the 5th. Oh, so you're paying it right before the statement yes, date so automatically. Yes, so then you don't have to worry about, okay, I want to pay it down before the statement date, and then I want to pay it off before the due date so I don't have any fees, any late, any... That's too much. Yeah. Just simplify it. Simplify it. So right. you just call your creditor and be like, hey, listen. Credit card company. Right. Mm -hmm. And Okay, your credit card company. Be like, hey, uh, my due date's the 15th, but I get paid on the 4th. Mm -hmm. Can we move my payment date to the 5th? Right. And they just adjust it for you. Yep. So you do have control of that. Nice. <laughs> so that's nice to know. But here's the other key. Okay. On the statement date, you want to have a small balance because having a zero balance shows the credit bureaus it's inactive. Oh. Even though it was at $900 at one point during right. the month. Right, but then so, I've paid it all 100% off, right, which and now people, they've got nothing to report, so they just bypass me, and I don't get that. Yeah, it shows inactive. You don't get any points, rewards, anything, or the pat on the back for, you know, the only thing you get the pat on the back is paying on time. Okay, so we want to maintain a running balance. Yes, a small balance. Okay, but and what what kind of balance would that look like? Ten percent, twenty five percent, less than thirty. This is where I'm like, okay, I don't want to stress anybody out. Okay, <laughs> but I also want to be truthful. Yeah, Go so ahead. give it to us, the most, real, real. Yeah, right. <laughs> the biggest challenge is trying to get people that fifty percent of whatever the credit limit. Or even sometimes just paying on time. Right. And making sure that they don't exceed their credit limit because that also can drop your score drastically. Oh, yeah, that would so make you, sense. So you have a balance of a 1000 a um, and 100 you know, so $1,100 on a $1,000 credit limit. Somehow your credit card allowed, it, allowed right. it to go through. That will drop your score equivalent to a collection. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we want to have balance. So, like, 
when I talk about this, I want to make sure that I'm speaking to the right audience. Pay your bills on time. Make sure that, you know, you don't have any late fees. And then as far as balance, depending on where you are and where that client is, I'm going to try to coach them down. Okay. Does that make sense? Because yeah, yeah, if yeah. someone's living their lifestyle maxed out on all their credit, but they are doing good in their mind because they're paying on time, they're doing what they can. Right. Okay. So that's But that's the not advice. how the credit company's going to look at it. They're right. going to be like, you were given a thousand dollars. You use nine hundred of it. Yeah. Uh, you, you're, you're good. We yeah. want the people who are using two hundred of it. Yeah. So the rules applied to everyone are the same. Okay. But coaching them, that's where it gets tricky. So yes. Yeah, so someone who might be living in the max out world, I'm going to try to get them lower. The other thing is, if we have three credit cards and all three of our maxed out. Instead of maxing, keeping one maxed out and two lower, mm -hmm. we want to lower all three of them. Okay, so, so bring them down gradually yeah. together. So we might have one maxed out, two at 20%, but what we want to do is ra we would rather have all three at 40%. Okay, that makes sense. Board. So that, you know, but And ideally, that is because, so, okay, so it's, I'm just going to clarify there because this is something I want to, there is a, Let's say debt to income ratio, right? Mm -hmm. And if I have twenty percent on two cards and then eighty percent on another card, but then I bring everything to forty, in my mind the numbers are oh, it's all the same. But right. why does it make a difference? That because each... you still have that one that's maxed out. Okay. And that one account can literally drop your score. So. So it is that intense. Yeah. So it's okay. okay so we have three hundred and fifty points. Okay. Total for credit. 30% of that is based on how you max out your revolving credit. Okay. 165 points That's of your get. credit profile is based on if you max out the revolving credit. So if you want a 780 FICO or higher, and that's a that's excellent, excellent credit. That's thing. when you almost get money back. And right. they're like, we love you. Take extra. Yes, that's your getting rewards. You're getting paid to borrow money. Uh, 780 or higher, which I absolutely love that. Oh yeah, no. When I'm doing when I'm doing a uh, buyer consult, and they're like, my credit's at 780, and I'm like, hallelujah, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yay. <laughs> Because um, not everybody's like that. Like we no. said in the beginning, it, usually it's a journey. It's yeah. not somebody showing up with like an 800 credit score and, you no, know, $200,000 to and buy a down payment. Right. Life happens. So 780 or higher, FICO, you want that at 10% or less on the statement date. Okay. Not statement at all date. times, just the statement date. So if you have a little OCD or you're like, oh my gosh, I'm crazy. I need to make sure. Just check right before your statement date. Make a payment maybe a day or two before uh -huh. to make sure it's low, but make sure you have that balance still. Yeah. And you keep saying on time, on time, yeah, on well, time. I am so sorry, but like we can't forget about that. We can't. So, so <laughs> some credit card, well, I would assume most nowadays, um, everyone I have, they just set it up like I can do an auto pay where True. it just happens. Yes. And that, because if, if on time is so important mm -hmm. and we don't want to have that lapse, wouldn't it make sense to have everything just auto pay? Sure. And, but it's kind of tricky because you might spend more one month versus another month and do you want to pay it in full so you don't have any fees? Yeah. That depends. But so, you don't want a zero balance because that's not going to report. Not on the statement date. Right, but the due state. date you want is zero balance, so you don't pay fees. Okay. Right. So see, it's like a big chess game. <laughs> You're like, we're moving. That's okay. That's why we have you here. You're going to help us maneuver those chess pieces. See? Because I'm going to tell you, I have so many people in the wings just waiting for prices, I mean, not prices, for interest rates to come down, and mm -hmm. then they want to purchase. But... In my realtor mind, that doesn't make any sense because then it's going to be a feeding frenzy and you're going to be fighting to get yeah, back into going to the be market. Some competition. Yep. So to position yourself, get yep. the best credit score you can. You know, and one late payment can take nine to 12 months to recover from and drop your score over 160 points. That's so, so that's harsh. why I keep repeating that on time, on time. Okay. I'm so sorry. So on time, on time, on time. Yes, okay. because uh, so many, so much of your credit profile. That's the biggest piece. Is do you pay your bills on time? Yeah. And what about diversifying that credit profile? How important is that? That is about fifteen percent. Okay. Um, so you know, um, diversifying. So if you only have just credit cards or like department store cards or gas cards, it doesn't score as high. Right. So let me ask, I'm going to ask you a challenge, maybe a challenging question. Okay. What, what do you think is the highest rated credit card? 
Okay, would your so, guess be? Okay, well, you, you said it, what I thought it was, because I was always told that the um, gas card is the best card because they report twice a month. Ah. Is that real? Um, not always, but the key is to ask whatever credit card company that you apply for is do you uh, report to all three credit bureaus okay. every 30 days? Okay. Because some credit bureau they don't, or credit cards, they don't. Okay. But of course, if you're late, guess what they will do? Ding. <laughs> so you're not getting all the positive credit, but you're getting that negative credit the one time you're late. So you want to make sure they're reporting every 30 days and to so, all three credit bureaus. Okay. So that's the one credit card that you should have, one that um, reports yeah, so every 30 ask, days. So the highest rating credit card, um, would you think like department store, gas card, well, I went with Gash Card. Yeah, so the highest rating credit card is American Express. Oh, okay. They're the hardest to get also. Right. Okay, so... Yeah, the, and the most prestigious. Right. You know, everybody, the black card. Everybody oh wants a God. black card in their wallet. <laughs> I'll take I, two. <laughs> I met somebody with a black card. Does that count? Yeah, you're like, <laughs> That's I've seen one. That's seven degrees. <laughs> I've seen one in person. It's crazy. Oh, my gosh. That, that is crazy. Um, so that and the major credit cards, the Visas, the MasterCard, Discover, those are going to score higher than the department store cards. Okay. Um, and some of the credit repair cards out there. So, um, like, do you like Zillow? Oh, well, I usually won't even say the Z word. But I, listen, I'm not opposed to Zillow. I think it gives the consumer the ability to get excited this about the shopping or what. Okay, so let's be positive about Zillow. Yes. This is the one time I'm going to be positive. Here we okay, go. Okay, but my point is credit karma okay. is Zillow to us. Okay, that's fair enough. Yes, yeah, so. Now that I put credit karma in a whole other light, I'll be like, oh. Yeah, so when you go to Credit Karma, it's free for a reason, one. But two, when they're advertising and promoting different credit card companies, do you really feel they have your best interests? Yeah, fair enough. I never even they thought about Credit Karma. They are promoting the credit card companies that are giving them money for advertising. Yeah, like Zillow. They're right. just capturing those leads and selling them back right. to realtors. So I really encourage you, if you're at any point to... Make sure you're connecting with a good person who really understands credit, a credit management company, a realtor who can guide you. There's a reason why they, people, we need realtors. So 92% of people who buy a home, by the way, use a realtor. As they should. Not using a realtor, you, you're the quarterback in the whole transaction. You are so resourceful in getting them connected to the right sources that they need for credit, for loan officers, so... And it's everything. 10th and every, one exchanges. You need a financial everything. advisor. We're buying from out of the country. What are the FERPTA rules? Yeah, we it's, definitely have a toolbox full of options to help people. Yeah, so who else and who better to have in your hip pocket than a really good realtor? Because they're going to be connected to so many amazing uh, resources for you. Like you, you're an amazing resource for people. That's well, one thing I do love about you, Cindy. Thank you. She, if you don't know Cindy, you should know that she is a giving person, like genuinely. She thank teaches you. sports to in soccer in Arizona. She teaches classes uh, for real estate agents for our continuing mm -hmm. education. You educate your clients when it comes mm -hmm. to loans, credits, and yeah. um, what package or product would be best for them. Yeah, you know, so. I think for whatever reason, um, you know, the information that the right information, let's emphasize the right information is just not really mainstream. Right. Why? I don't get it. I, it's it all gatekeeping. Just be available. And <laughs> I so, agree. you know, we get stuck following the wrong people that guide us down the wrong path and then people are taken advantage of, especially like credit okay, management. Okay, so now you're saying uh, being taken advantage of wrong people down the wrong path. I may have been guilty of that in the past with uh, divorces and things yeah. that can really affect yeah. your credit. What about information on that? Like uh, I've heard you say something on freezing credit. Yeah, you know, and I do teach a class. It's probably the most popular class I have is on divorce. Okay. And that really is teaching you as a realtor to be that resource and have so many different resources, attorneys, all these things. And the first thing that's always compromised when people go through divorce is credit. Yep. You know, unfortunately, there's a lot of emotion involved, and I, people can get 
a little bit ugly with each other. Yeah, yeah. And it's that's a weird thing for a realtor because I've done divorced households before mm -hmm. and you think like, okay, so we're going to sell their house and then we're going to put them each in another house. It's fine. But really most of that transaction is sort of mediating those emotions because yeah. it's not personal and here you are in this devastating part of your life just trying to navigate yeah and then and then you get penalized like not only are you going through hell girl but now your credit's going to be yeah. jacked up and you know your spouse has access to all of your information mm -hmm. so a really good easy solution okay. to prevent lots of problems on credit is to freeze your credit all right it's free I love that. There's not very much free in this economy, folks. Take right. advantage of it. If you need it, use it. Freezing your credit still allows you to use your credit that's open, the creditors to continue to report your activity, but it doesn't allow anyone, including yourself, to open new accounts, to um, pull credit again until you manually take and lift the freeze off. Right. So if you have someone in your life for whatever reason you don't trust, going through a divorce is a big example right. of this, freeze your credit. Don't worry about what your spouse is going to do while you're sleeping. Prevent it. Prevent it. Yeah, smart. And you have to be proactive yeah, to take care I mean, of yourself. You know, we get caught with, well, you know, I'm just, I'm, I hear this all the time. They opened up a new account. They charged so much. And for principal purposes, I'm not paying that card. Right. You're like, uh, no. Like, oh, my no. gosh. And you see their credit drop 100, 120, 130 points because for principal purposes. Yeah, yeah. You can't let that ego get in the way. Pay the bill. Right. <laughs> You're then, doing yourself damage. Right. And remember, it takes over a year to recover. Yeah. Because of principal. So stop. Prevent it. Freeze it move on with your life sleep good at night sleep good right. ah, but that's my favorite thing i love sleeping good at night oh yeah. i like to know that everything is fine i'm going to be fine in the morning so uh if you are worried that things are happening on your credit score can you check it yourself i mean you credit i mean most people here we are we're in credit karma but mm -hmm. if that's like your z word then you're not sending yeah. people there no how, how would somebody effectively watch their credit so i always recommend going straight to one of the three credit bureaus okay so, so that's we like have, transunion mm -hmm. equifax and uh experian. experian yep you got it okay awesome so you can uh create an online account with each of the credit bureaus and then once you create it, you have the ability to freeze, lift the freeze, and also check your credit. Okay. And when you check your own credit, it's not a hard inquiry, so it doesn't drop your score. Okay, that's good. Yep. And you have at least one free one every year with the credit bureaus, but you can check it as many times as you want if you need. It still will not drop your score. Okay. Well, that's good. So let's just hit on that real quick in case people who aren't familiar with having their credit pulled often, there's a soft pull and a hard pull and they affect your credit mm -hmm. in different ways. Really quickly go through that. So a soft pull is just for us to look and make sure there's no new activity that's happening or it dings us and alerts okay. and just kind of make sure that things are still on track. Right. Um, we can see it, but we're not telling the credit bureaus that we're inquiring about them. So when we inquire with a hard pull, which we require because right. it's a mortgage. Yeah, it's a pretty big, pretty big amount of money. You're asking for a half million plus, right? right. Um, we are going to do a hard pull. Okay. So we're going to notify the credit bureaus that we are looking at credit. You are curious about trying to get a loan of some sort of a mortgage, you know, and that's the biggest asset out there. So I always tell people, I promise you this. For whatever points it drops, it might drop one or two points, but it's only a 30-day drop. Okay. After 30 days, it recovers, unless you continue to like, let mortgage companies. Or car companies or right, credit card companies. Right. You don't want to constantly be what applying for credit. What score is the new loan, Okay. not the inquiry. Okay. Right? So actually getting that credit gives right. you a ding. Is that short-term or long-term, that ding? So that it's short-term. Okay. And my kind of what I've seen is two to three on-time payments after a new loan opens, you break even and then you start benefiting because the on-time payments start now raising your credit score. And especially mortgage, that's the highest rating that you're going to have on your credit profile. 
So on-time mortgage payments really start increasing your payments. Again, everything else still has to be on time. On time, on time. I guess that should be the, the title <laughs> the of this week's episode. Just be be on time. If you want credit, don't mess it up. Be on time. Yes. Or do the auto pay like you said. Even if it's yeah. just the minimum payment, right. go ahead and do that. That protects your score. The credit balance ratio, you can control that at any point you want. Right. You can make payments throughout the month mm -hmm. to get rid of that, but just making sure that the minimal amount is paid on time each and every month yeah. is a, the best protector for you. That's awesome. And then um, we talked about diver diversifying those loans. And then uh, what about if you do, when you do go sell, when you do go and you find something on your credit report, how do you dispute that? I know that we talked about companies, some are good, some are bad, but if you're being proactive and you're doing it, what are some of the steps you can take? So we do have, I have access to one of the credit management companies that I really like. Um, I, you can go there and okay. they can guide you. Yes, you'll have a fee for it, but it's not a monthly fee. They only actually charge for what they work on. Weird. Yeah, nice. Right? I like that. Um, Seems fair. Yeah, I know. But, you know, people are like, what? What's going on? Um, but you can actually do it yourself. So you can ask whatever credit card company or who the creditor is, you know, what the error is. Why is that showing up? And okay. then once you get a letter from them correcting the error, saying, oh, we made an error. That was a thir that 30 day late was not late. Here's the letter showing that we're going to remove that from the credit bureaus. Right. The key is to get that letter from them. Right. Because then, mistakes do happen. Yeah. And relying on them to report it to the credit bureaus. Yeah. Have fun with that. Yeah. They're you like, know, no, that's not my job. <laughs> yes. Or, you know, and if you're a fan of having control of your own credit, then getting that letter is going to give you that control. Then you can send it directly to the credit bureaus. Yeah. I think I read somewhere that 25% um, of Americans credit have discrepancies and errors on them that need to be corrected oh yeah you think that's a fair number oh, yeah you're At like least yes that. that's you're like that's a low ball yeah okay yeah. cool so make sure you do that and um if you're trying to build credit and you've had the you're starting to get rid of some of these dings if you want to build that credit up what are the ways that people can do that i know that there's like a secured card if you're mm -hmm. starting out on credit mm -hmm. um what else can well, secured is if you don't have any credit at all, that's mm -hmm. a good place to start. Okay. Um, also, wherever you bank, whatever bank you bank at, go in there and ask for a credit card okay. from them. And there, that's considered a major credit card. It's most likely a MasterCard or a Visa. Correct. So most banks will have access. And they also have your activity. So if you have a lot of NSFs, those are bad words in our world, oh, okay. they probably will not approve you or they'll start you off with a secured credit card. Okay. So that's a good place to start because the credit card world out there can be really overwhelming, hard to understand which ones have annual fees, what terms, what the APR is, all that stuff. It's like yeah. So if simplify that's, it. If that's so confusing, and because there's a lot, and mm -hmm. maybe in the beginning of time you're not used to figuring out what's the right card for you is going to be. What about something like um, I've heard of self-reporting? What do you think of that self-reporting so payments that you've made? Self-reporting, you can do that with pretty much everything. Yeah, like Netflix. But it would, even. <laughs> yes, it, it will cost okay some money. So like utility companies is a great place to start. Okay. So your utilities, NV Energy. They might charge you 20 bucks a month, but they're also going to report it to all three credit bureaus for you. Okay. And so you contact your, uh, let's say Netflix or Nevada Energy or mm -hmm. whatever, and you ask them to mm -hmm. report for you Yep. and they put a fee on your account because yep. you're paying for it. Yep. And so then when I see that on a credit report and I'm like, okay, you have enough credit, stop paying that fee now. You have enough of other credit. You don't have to pay that $20 fee with NV Energy anymore. You've got your mortgage, you've got your credit card, and you've got an auto loan. So you do want to diversify your yep. credit also. So some people are in that habit, and then I'm like, here, let me save you $20 a month. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I'm Which one of those perpetual uh, fee payers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the length of the credit line is important, right? It is. So average credit length, what would your guess be? This is kind of a trick question, so okay. I'm going yeah. so to sorry to set me, you I up. have some credit lines that are older than my children, and then I have some that are five years old. But I would assume, let's see, the average credit, I don't know. I think that people, if they had a credit line for, say, six years, have been adulting 
pretty well. How, yeah. how close was I? <laughs> you know, and so to be fair, your lens is you're looking at the credit lines, which is the longest right. potential credit. But overall credit, like auto loans, mortgages, okay. student loans, all these loans typically are short term. Okay. Think about an auto loan. Like three to five years. Right. Depending upon. And God forbid we refinance. <laughs> that ends that loan and then opens a new loan. So the average length of credit is only four years. Really? Yeah. But the wow, so that's credit insane. cards actually serve a very good purpose for our, lo our longevity. The longer our credit is open, the better it is. And that's 10% of our um, credit profile and points. All right. It's crazy. So there's it? a lot that goes into that credit it profile. Is. Oh, my gosh. All right. So as we're wrapping this up, we just want to say pay your bill on time. On time. In case you didn't hear it, pay it on time. On time. When should they pay it? On time. Okay, that's a great <laughs> idea. Let's pay it on time. And then um, Thank you. So paying that on time and then keeping your debt to income ratio. Don't max out those credit cards yep. because that's going to be an issue. Just for the statement date. For the statement date. Yep. For the we can move our due date. Okay. Yep. That was that was actually kind of cool. I didn't know you can move that. I know. I right? know. I like we that. We actually have control, but it's like... This reminds me of like having a smartphone. Yeah. This phone can do so many things, but I'm not smart enough to use it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Right. It only has the capability to go as far as the user can take it. So, so what we don't realize is we actually have more control than we know about. What, but we don't know what we don't know. Yeah. That's why it takes an expert to come in and help you kind of navigate through that. I can tell you over and over and over these stories of clients that are like, if I would have known that and thank you now, I feel in control. Yeah. Just simple things like freeze your credit when yeah. you're going through a divorce. Yeah. No, that's that's the thing. And you are like a valuable resource that I thank think you. and a kind person willing to help people. If somebody did want to get a hold of you, Cindy, to talk about credit, because everybody's different, what their journey is going to yep. be, you'll have to actually look at each person. So how did they get a hold of you? If you, they want to talk to you, if they want you to help them get on track, how do they call they you? They can call me. Here's my number. Okay. My number is 602 793-9061. It's been my number since I was 16. Eek. I know. I've had my number for more years than I'd like to say. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, you know, it's funny because I'm like, it's a complicated number, my yeah. number. But I'm like, I can't change it now. No, no, no. So, you're you're yeah. in the sauce, girl. Keep the number. All right. So thank you very much, Cindy Hollis from CMG Financial for coming back and sharing that with us. And again, if you'd like to get a hold of her, make sure you shout out because she is so awesome. She will definitely sit down and help you. <laughs> My name is Tiana Carroll here at Vegas Realty Check. If you have any questions, anything real estate, feel free to give me a call at 702-379-9948. And uh, make sure that if you find value in any of this content and you're joining our tribe to download those podcast. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe on our YouTube channel. We really appreciate you guys, and we will see you next week. Until then, Vegas, have a good week. Bye, you guys. Bye. Thanks for showing up, Cindy. Thank you for having me. Okay.